Hey, right before we get into my analysis and reaction of the Any% percent task, I want to give massive shoutouts to Constructive Cynicism, who's the person who made this. So I highly recommend you check out their channel, they do a lot of cool Hollow Knight and Rain World stuff. And yeah, let's get into it. Also, I'm sorry if I sound a little bit sick, because, well, yeah, I'm, I'm sick. <laughs> Chat, it's here. The Tool Assisted Hollow Knight speedrun is here. For those that are unaware, a tool assisted speedrun uh, is a speedrun that is not played by a human. It's actually made by a human using different tools to make it like really, um, to make it like as close to the theoretical limit as possible. So, what you're gonna be watching here is the result of basically a computer reading a script of inputs combined with RNG manipulation. I am so extremely excited to watch this, actually. <laughs> Alright, chat. So we're gonna be watching the theoretical perfect Hollow Knight speedrun. If you had perfect RNG and perfect execution. Let's get into it. Also, I want to mention that I talked to Constructive Cynicism himself. And he's explained to me a lot of stuff. So I can actually give you some insight. So the first thing you're gonna see here are these nail turnarounds. You're gonna see the task is gonna be turning around and hitting things with the nail. And this is actually not viable to do for humans. It's not faster for humans to do this. But the tool assisted speedrun can pull it off so consistently that it actually saves like 0 0.02 or something per nail turnaround. And they're gonna be doing this at basically every opportunity possible. So, also look at those tight jumps. Look at the precision on those jumps, just jumping barely onto the corners. I am so excited, chat. So what they're doing is they're turning around right as they reach the edge of a jump, which kind of cuts your momentum in a way. That's a 49-28 King's Pass. That's a 49-28 King's Pass, chat. That, that by itself is ridiculous. Oh my god. Okay. We're gonna be going over King's Pass here. This task is so incredibly insane. CC told me- look at the, look at the little steps. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> look at the little steps just slashing on every single one of the steps. <laughs> oh my god. So you're seeing they're doing nail turnarounds here, and the middle drop is actually faster here. Okay, moving on. So this task is actually done in a single segment, which is really cool. <laughs> so CC actually spent- look at this- actually, there's so much to talk about, it's so hard to- look at the precision on that. Nail turnarounds on every corner. Even on the gomes. <laughs> Even on the gomes. So, the way that they actually make the RNG cons uh, consistent in these tasks is they use Linux system clock manipulation, which, to be honest, I don't have any idea what it means in the first place. Um, and... What they do is that they set like the base RNG number and then every single game action changes the RNG. So every time you see them jump for no reason or like slash in the air for no reason, they're changing the RNG number so that it like changes the, the, the things that enemies and bosses will do. So that's basically what's happening here is <laughs> on the little arches. Oh, the nail turnarounds on the arches. This, this is great. <laughs> This is so cool! Oh my god, I love this. Holy shit. And of course, getting a perfect false knight. Going out to grab the Geo. This is awesome. So, they're gonna be skipping false knight. So by the way, this is the any percent task. It's the same route as any percent, no major glitches. And it's pretty crazy how much faster it can become once you start bringing in like the tasks only movement, like the nail turnarounds for example. 
If a human does this, it doesn't save time. But the task does it at every corner, and it adds up. Those 0 0.02 seconds or whatever, they add up really quick. <laughs> so for Vengeful Spirit, they're already like 8 seconds faster. They're already like 8 seconds faster than whatever a human can achieve. Also, by the way, CC in the chat, I see you. You're freaking awesome. Chat, can we get some love for CC? He's the creator of this task. Um, uh, freaking insane. He's been working on this for quite a while now. And I've been stopping by his streams a little bit. He was also really nice to help me out with explaining some of the tasks, um, tricks and such, so that I actually know what's going on and can kind of explain what's happening for you all. So, much love for CC. Everyone go follow CC's Twitch and YouTube. It's twitch.tv slash constructive cynicism. Same for Twitch, also constructive cynicism. So, <laughs> it's just really cool to see some of the choices the task makes. Things that I probably didn't think was faster. Um, that actually end up being faster. What I've seen, I've seen some small parts of this. What I've seen is the little Vengefly pogo that they'll do here. That usually it's faster to go over the platform. And also you can just jump over this boulder apparently, which I did not know. Look at this. So this is apparently faster. <laughs> going under the platform like that. And of course, then, whoa. The nail cancels on the boulder. Wait, what? Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool, chat. Look at this. <laughs> oh my god. They nail cancel the boulder spit. Holy shit. That's crazy. And for those wondering, both Fury and, um... Both Fury and Soul Catcher were timed to be slower, even in tasks. So they're not actually getting Fury or Soul Catcher. Look at those jumps. <laughs> oh my god! The jumps are so precise, it looks like, it looks like they're using Claw. That's crazy. That is absolutely ridiculous. And the Baldur quick kill. This is of course run on 1221 as well, so there's inventory drops, there's lever skips, there's all that stuff. Oh my god, this is so cool. Five minutes like flat, Green Path. That is ridiculous. This is so cool. Like we haven't had this before really. I think I'm pretty sure this is the full the first no major glitches full game task. The one fireball, let's go. The one fireball, fireball skip. <laughs> They're just nail turn rounding everything. Interesting that they're still grabbing the Geo from this. Oh! Wait, wait, what? They, <laughs> they nail turn around into a fireball skip. Holy fuck. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. This is so cool. This is ridiculous. Look at those jumps. This is actually ridiculous. So, wait, let me scroll back to the correct place. So the way I'm understanding these jumps right here is... So what they're doing is that as soon as they reach kind of like here, they turn around because that kind of nudges them so that they, they kind of land in a specific way. And they're doing these little turnarounds upon everything. So it's like a little wiggle jump. And that lets them go like basically straight upwards. Which is pretty crazy. Turning changes jump speed. Interesting. I'm surprised they didn't do a nail cancel there at the beginning. Doing the, the two fireball moss knight as per usual. Pretty standard stuff. They do it in a pretty cool way though. I'm actually curious to see if the geo route is the same. If they did it... CC, did you do it same on purpose or did you do it just as optimal as you can? Or did it just happen to be optimal? Doing Vengefly King. That one is- that strat is RTA viable, kind of. Georad is just optimal. Interesting. So that means that... Oh, you go over there to get the Geo- the soul, that's pretty cool. So that means that even with a perfect theoretical speedrun, the Geo that we have in real-time runs, the Geo routing is actually 
the fastest it can be at the moment. Doing the tech skip on Hornet. <laughs> oh my god. What the heck? She's just locked in that corner. She's just locked in the corner. What the fuck? Look at this. She doesn't leave. She bonks her head on the top of the gate. So you can basically just nail cancel her over and over again. That's what 10 seconds of a Hornet fight. That is the power of the RNG manipulation that Tas can do. That is ridiculous. Absolutely bullied. That's crazy. I am already blown away by this. This is really cool. So they're now moving to Fungal. And the way that I understand it, chat, once we get Claw, we're gonna get to the very interesting part. <laughs> and that has to do with how the TAS uses wall cling storage. And we'll get to that later. But the TAS uses wall cling storage basically everywhere. <laughs> Look at these precise inventory drops. Also doing <laughs> nail turnarounds on every corner. Sedic slash, you love to see it. Let's go. What's the point of doing so many nail turnarounds? So each one of these little nail turnarounds, if they're done optimally, they save like 0.04 seconds, I believe. So if you turn around and then immediately slash and then turn back around, you can use the nail knockback from hitting like a wall or an enemy. To push yourself forward. And if you do it perfectly, it saves a little bit of time. Just a tiny bit of time. It's not something that humans can consistently reproduce, but it's something that the task can do that. Ah, get this out of here. Let's see this Epogo. What strat did they- Oh, wow. <laughs> Hold on. Holy fuck. What is this? <laughs> they fireball the um the spore to have it explode right at the top. There's a different version of this, like slightly modified, that is done by human runners, I believe. But I've never seen it done like right at the very top. That's ridiculous. That's so cool. This already has me blown away. Wait. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> it just up slashes this little mushroom, goes under it. <laughs> That mushroom got bullied. That's so funny. So they hit the one all the way far from the- Oh, wow. Interesting that they use a different double dash strat than humans. That's cool. Alright, chat. Here's Claw. They also do this, uh, this enemy manipulation here. To get this Mantis to hit you out of the, um... To hit you out of the, uh, the pickup animation. And this was actually found a little while ago. It saves a little bit of time to do this a little bit of a convoluted method. It looks like it's slow, but it actually saves a bit of time. Uh, so you lure this Mantis down in a specific way. It hits you out of the animation and you can get control and crit out immediately. And this is where it gets real, chat. It's time for wall cling storage. So before we get to wall cling storage, I want to quickly explain for you all what's happening uh, with wall cling storage. So wall cling storage is a glitch that lets you keep your wall cling state and on certain patches store dash momentum into uh, the wall cling state. So you might have seen it in human runs when you for example dash through a gate and you go we you know you go hk slide. By the way hk slides in the chat. It's gonna be hk slide heaven. Um, you go Wii, you know, you can also do it from elevators if you do it in a specific way. But in the two weeks that Constructive Cynicism worked on this task, he found like three different new ways to get wall cling storage. So basically, you can get it off any wall by grabbing onto the wall, on the next frame letting go of the wall, and then grabbing the wall again, and then followed by a dash. So it's like a four frame consecutive thing. And you can get wall cling storage off any wall. Literally any wall. And this is all no major glitches. This is not humanly reproducible. What you're about to see will not be able to be done by humans. This is just frame perfect tricks basically everywhere. It's 
it's pretty wild. Also, I'm gonna warn you, it's also gonna be a bit loud, because they're doing this thing where they're every frame, or every other frame, in the wall cling storage, they're letting go of the imaginary wall. So it's gonna have like the nail regrab frame, or the, the wall regrab audio, every other frame. So it's gonna sound like a little buzz saw. And I'm warning your ears, I might have to lower the volume a bit. <laughs> but just um just observe what you're about to see. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> HK slides in the chat. HK slides in the chat, everyone. <laughs> That's so cool. All all minor glitches, by the way, according to to the community rule set. All minor glitches. This is technically allowed. If a human was able to do this, it would technically be allowed. <laughs> Holy shit! They just zoom through everything. <laughs> oh my god. Just straight into the boss fight. Oh my god. That's so cool. Holy shit. That's awesome. Don't know what they're doing here. Might be RNG manipulation. Getting a nice one fireball. Here's a regular form of wall cling storage. But the the reason they're letting go of the wall every other frame is because it apparently saves height and it increases your speed, I think. So a regular wall cling storage would not be able to clear this entire gap here. But because they're doing this, these uh, let goes and regrabs every other frame, they can get all the way over there. <laughs> <laughs> the shop! <laughs> the shop, man. Take a look at this. <laughs> It doesn't even scroll. It doesn't even scroll. My god. <laughs> oh my. This is crazy. I can't even cover everything. There's so much happening. So what they're doing there is they're opening their inventory as soon as they take damage to get control back uh, of the character. Because usually when you take damage you have like the stun, right? But what they're doing there is they're opening the inventory real quick uh -huh. to get a little bit of a quicker control back. Kind of like you would do with an inventory scream skip. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. They fireball right after the dashes. Or right after they die. And the geo from the little husk falls on top of the dying body. They actually pick up that geo. It's pretty funny. Right on the, the, the ledge where they have to die. <laughs> What is that charm menuing? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I love this. <laughs> oh my god. The wall- wait. I gotta watch that again. The wall cling storage shade skip. <laughs> and here comes the blue lake- blue lake wall cling storage. Just- Cruising across, storing the wall cling state in the water. Just zoom in. Beautiful. Beautiful. So what they're doing here, like these these preservations of the wall cling storage, normally your wall cling storage is gonna disappear. But if you jump, I think on the same physics frame as you land, or in the next physics frame, it's either one of their two, those two. By the way, physics frames are, the game runs in 50 frames per second, and that's the frame rate that they use for, like, gravity, player movement, stuff like that. So, like, yeah, stuff like that. It's basically how the game keeps, like, consistent movement across multiple frame rates. Um, so that's a physics frame. So I think if you jump on the same physics frame, or on the next physics frame, it's either one of those two, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on it. 
you can preserve your Walkling storage state. And this is actually doable for humans. You've seen people get, like, Walkling storage change sometimes. Um, in my Zero Geo record, I do get a Walkling storage change, uh, chain on, uh, on the Sanctum escape. And that's if you happen to get these physics frame perfect inputs. It happens sometimes, it's pretty rare. Uh, but similar to the current patch inventory drop, while it is really, really precise, you can get kind of good at it enough to, like, get it sometimes, so to say. But yeah, let's move on. <laughs> wow. This is just pretty crazy. Like, all of this is so much to look at. It's just completely mind-blowing. Getting a nice little walkling storage there. Jumping into the Dreamer cutscene as far left as possible. Like, standing on the very left of that, not even in the middle. Um, and what's impressive is the text skipping speed. Look at the text skipping speed. That's really fast. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does remind you of, like, freaking wave dashing in Celeste. It's just Celeste chat. Hollow Knight Tass is just Celeste. Just dashing all the way over the place with weird dashes that go very far and very quickly. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Going up as soon as possible. Do they do any walkling storage here? Oh, they do. <laughs> oh my god, that's so cool. Holy shit. <laughs> oh. So here, another thing you can do with walkling storage is that you, you can jump... You can jump out of the... Where's the playback speed? There we go. You can jump out of the imaginary... You can jump out of the imaginary wall for like a wall jump. Because the game thinks there's a wall here. So you're gonna see here... They dash right there. They jump off the imaginary wall to get enough height. And then they lose their wall cling storage state. This sounds really cursed, this audio. That is just wild. I am mind blown. It's so hard to keep talking about things. Like, there's so much happening at once. It's so hard to process. It's ridiculous. This is so cool. Shoutouts to Cece again. Doing the seer skip. Of course. Doing that little classic slide. Of course, getting walkling storage on the way out. Because, yeah, of course they're gonna get walkling storage. Just look at them go. This is why the task is so much faster. I don't want to say the final time yet, because that's kind of cool to discover once we reach the ending. But it's sub-30, I'll give you that. It's sub-29. Actually, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Chat. This run is done in 28 minutes and 59 seconds. Twenty-eight minutes and fifty-nine seconds. It's wild. For reference, I don't I don't think comparing human runs to tasks is like a good idea, so don't make it like a comparison thing. But the human world record for this category is thir thirty-two minutes and sixteen seconds. That's what humans can do right now. I don't I don't like comparing tasks to human runners because it's you know, there's there's a fundamental flaw of it being an extremely unfair comparison. Um, but that's for reference, just to give you an idea of how fast this is. So they're getting the soul here. Just casually getting wall cling storage off the wall. <laughs> that's that's so cool. The way they just, they just knock the enemies around is really awesome. Look at that. <laughs> Wall cling storage straight into the fireball on the enemies, just zooming away. Do they get wall cling storage on the pogos? Nah, they don't, unfortunate. They get it on their way back though. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. This is this is just Celeste. This is just Celeste. Celeste Squish is in the chat. <laughs> mm. 
Look at that. The nice double hits, picking up every bit of Geo. Wow. <laughs> just straight up from up here, just... Yeah, we're leaving now. We're going... We're leaving the room. Yeah, we're done here. That's... That's wild. Just the speed of movement is ridiculous. They don't opt to get elevator wall cling storage here. Interesting. They do get it here, though. And you're gonna see the lever skip here. Also, just shoutouts to the incredibly fast wall clings. Look, the frame perfect wall clings. You're gonna see when they climb up to Lurian. But chat, look at those wall clings. Is that not really satisfying? And oh heck yes, it's time for watchers. Just observe. I've actually seen this part of the run before. It's ridiculous. It's time for watchers. So they're just basically hovering around. Just kind of being in the top left and top right. So what they're doing here is RNG manipulation as well. Look at that. Just moving, keeping them close together through RNG manipulation. Getting the triple hits. And of course, while they're waiting, why not do some dumb wall cling storage? It's so cool. In between that first pair, the fact that they just zoom across the room is just really funny to me. Look at that. It's hard to even grasp. It's hard to even grasp how fast that was. That is very well below f a, a minute of Watcher Knight's fight. They do that in much less than a minute. Like, just look at, look at this. Okay. So first... Actually, wait, no. Yeah, first Watcher is here. <laughs> they kill the first Watcher. Walkling storage across the room. 48 seconds split time. That is wild. This is so cool. The precision and, like... Everything is just so wow. Okay, let's move on. So here's the watchers. They're done. They're defeated. Holy moly. Look at those wall jumps. This might be my favorite part, actually. Just seeing the really sat the really satisfying frame perfect task wall jumps. That's that's really cool. Look at that. <laughs> It's so fast. It's so smooth and seamless. Also, by the way, mods, can you add uh, CC's channel to the task command? Of course, getting the dreamers, there, there's not that much to do here. The dreamers, funnily enough, are the only part of the entire game that doesn't seem to be changed at all. It's just like playing the game but wow I am mind blown I am absolutely mind blown by this so far I had seen some parts of it I know I knew what was coming I knew about the wall cling storage but still but still it's just ridiculous <laughs> oh my god what the camera can't even keep up. The camera doesn't even keep up. This is so dumb. So they drop through, the camera doesn't keep up, they get walking storage and leave the room before the camera catches up. <laughs> That's so cool. They get walking storage here. Oh, another way to preserve walking storage is through uh, screen transitions, the vertical screen transitions. If you have walking storage, uh, going in, as soon as you jump and, like, preserve it in, like, the phys physics frame perfect jump right after you land, you can keep wall cling storage. So that's what's happening here. When they enter that room. Just a seamless inventory drops into whatever the heck this is. Just getting a new wall cling storage on the wall in, like, three frames, and then just zooming across the room. It's beautiful. How are they gonna do this? <laughs> I 
I actually saw this part when CC was making it, but I forgot it. I forgot this happens. It's so funny. So they go, they go up here on the inside of this overarching little, little room up here. Get wall cling storage on the wall, and then just go wee. <laughs> it's so. Oh my god. Like, just thinking about that is honestly really impressive by itself. Like, you need to have creativity to come up with these strats. Because they're just unlike what what an RTA run would be like. They're just completely different. Getting elevator walkling storage there. There go hi Lem, hello Lem. It's just wild. I am I am seriously lost for birds. This is awesome. I don't know what else to say really. And selling the relics, you know, the slowest part of the run. <laughs> Not much you can do here. <laughs> wow, Blue, you must have done a lot of practice. Your movement looks so much better. <laughs> yeah. For those wondering, I'm not playing the game. I'm watching the TAS, which is like a... Not a human run. Lem is faster than the TAS! You're right. Look, chat. Lem is faster than the TAS. We go out here. We go out here, we talk to Lem. He's like, hi. And Lem is back up there. He's faster than the task. Lem is the best speedrunner, chat. What the hell? Look at the speed of this guy's movement. Look at the speed of this guy's movement. He's faster than the tasks. How? What? Stop cheating, Lem. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Getting wall cling storage off the little elevator dip. That's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> just these long rooms are perfect for this. They just zoom across. It's beautiful. They do the impossible jo Oh, that's pretty interesting. Wow. Okay, this is actually really interesting. I'm surprised, like, going back... If you can see my, my cursor here. I'm surprised going back here to get walkling storage saves time like it's hard to grasp how much faster it is than just dashing so like it's still faster to go back like here as well than just continuing this way it's faster to go back here get walkling storage off this wall and then going this way that's pretty wild i find that super cool <laughs> straight into the toll Look at that beautiful- wow, that is an instant bell if I've ever seen one. That is really cool, actually. That is an insta bell and a half. Okay. We s chat, we saw, the we saw the shaman stone shopping? We saw the shaman stone shopping. But what about the lantern shopping? <laughs> uh, there's no menu. There's no menu. There's just no menu, chat. There is just no menu. There's just no menu. Like, even if you go in, like, 0.25 speed. That's the quality option, so that's the wrong thing. Let's go in 0.25 speed, right? Is there any menu? Can we see the menu, even? Oh god, Sly sounds really cursed like this, actually. Ugh, I hate this sound. Yeah, you can't see it. You can't see it. That is wild. That's that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's super cool. So what's interesting is that the task is actually working out the geo route pretty fine. Um. Yeah, that's the cool thing with the menus. Hold on, I'm gonna get into this room in just a second. That's the cool thing about the Hollow Knight menus. The, uh... It's not restricted by the animations. The animations trail after. The thing is, humans can't spam down, like, eight frames consecutively. Like, a separate in input, eight, eight frames in a row or whatever. 
But if you theoretically can, then it's possible to do that. <laughs> and I find that really cool. I find that really awesome. So, this infected room right here is an actual pain for human runs. Like, this room, I can never get through it without damage tanking. But the task just zooms through. They're just so much faster than the... than the uh, infected bench lies. Getting a nice wall queen storage chain here. Beautiful. I'm curious to see how they handle the peak cycles. Wow. They're just going. They're just going. They are just... They're just going. Is there Pogax? Oh. <laughs> it's it's Pog wall cling storage. Who needs Pogax? Yeah. It's Pog wall cling storage. We don't need it here. We don't need any Pogax. This is crazy. Like seriously, this is ridiculous. Is that... Is that a god pixel situation, or is it just timing the cycle? I think that's just timing the cycle. I don't think the knight's hitbox is small enough to pass through. I'm pretty sure that's just timing the cycle. We, we can take a look at it, though. Yeah, so look at this. Yeah, okay, no, they're, they're timing the cycle. I thought they god pixeled. <laughs> yeah, the, the knight's hitbox is too tall to do a horizontal god pixel. Unfortunately. Look at the ascension. Look at the movement speed. <laughs> wow. Shifts plus and shifts. Oh, okay. Thank you. I don't know the, the YouTube uh, hotkeys. Wow. Holy shit. Oh, they still have to wait for the cycles. Interesting. Interesting. They're still waiting for the cycles. It's kind of cool that it's still slower to damage tank than it is to wait for- No, they do damage tank here. Okay. Wait, is this the same cycle as vanilla? Or as non tas No, okay, they wall cling storage. <laughs> I was gonna say. Do they underplat though? They still underplat! Yes! Yes! Claps for the- claps for the tasks. Claps for the tasks, everyone. They still underplat. Can we have some shroom pogs? Can we have some shroom pogs in the chat? Also, by the way, for reference, if I bring up my old- my own 90% PB chat, if I do that real quick, let me scroll over here. C dash. 2322. Like, sure, this is a 3434. It's- like a minute, uh, it's like two minutes off world record, but still, this is still like an okay any percent. I want to go back and make it better, but like, right now I'm fine with this. This task is a lot faster. My god, that's wild. <laughs> this is really cool. I'm I'm having a blast watching this. What I'm curious is the Geo route. So they have 168 Geo now, and they're gonna need 250 by the end of Beast Den. Are they still off to- oh, okay, they have Dash. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I want to see how they handle the, um, the Umu fight, honestly. I'm curious to how they handle the Umu fight. Honestly. Do they- do they two cycle still? Um, I wonder if they do something else. Because I know that technically the infection jellies... Also, nice movement. I know that technically the infection jellies can kill everything in one hit in that room. But, I, I haven't seen it. I think I've seen... I think I've seen that done task before. Does it do that? I think it... If it does that, I'm gonna be blown away. Please tell me. Does, does that actually work? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Just watch this. This has no words. There are no words to explain this. 
No words. I have nothing to say. There is nothing that I possibly can say about this. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. And Umu's dead, just like that. Just like that. It's it's wild. It's absolutely ridiculous. Let's let's take a step back here. Let's take a step back there. Let's let's go from here. Let's up Let's appreciate this in, um, in half speed. I'm gonna maybe lower the volume a little bit. Okay, so this jelly right here, they slash. And from here on out, every single movement, every single action is made not only to dodge Umu, but for, to prevent this exploding jelly to hit any walls or the knights. To have it long enough so that when Umu opens, they can one-shot. Because these, je these jellies actually one-shot stuff in this room. They don't in Pantheon Umu, because those are programmed differently. Just look at this. It's just orbiting. How is it possible? With very precise inputs, very precise movements, Exactly well timed. For reference, in any percent, regularly. Okay, this is actually kind of painful to listen to. For any percent, regularly, chat, you have to do a two cycle, and a two cycle is very precise. But they pogo the jelly, break it, as soon as Ubu opens. They die instantly, because they're inside the explosion hitbox. It's just... it's crazy. It's... this thing right here is by itself enough to make this task something absolutely in incredible. It's... it's wild. CC, if you're still here, how long did this take you to task? Just, just the Umu fight. How long did the Umu fight take you to make? First time was 8 hours, second time was 6 hours. So quite a while. Imagine sitting 6 hours... ...doing this. A single, like, tw 30 second segment. Tasks take a lot of work and a lot of effort to do, chat. It's, it's crazy how much work. Because you have to make sure the RNG is just right. You have to make sure every single input is just right. If you want it to be as close to perfect as you want. It's just wild. No, action. this isn't segmented. They were encoded separately. But it's all a single segment. This task is a single segment. That is ridiculous. This by itself is just ridiculous. And of course they just wall cling storage across. They don't need any C-dashes. C-dashes, yeah, we don't need it. C-dashes are cringe. We reject them here. We don't need any C-dashes. No, they didn't pogo the acid. They, uh, they jumped out of the imaginary wall, right? next to the acid. Okay, here they actually see dash and aside from regularly, they're just walking around having a good time. Possibly RNG manipulation? Not fully sure about that actually. Not fully sure whether that is RNG manipulation or not. Yeah, they they don't really use C dash. It's RNG manipulation. All right, good to know. Now this exit. Let's take a look at it. <laughs> Doing the wall cling storage again, jumping out of the imaginary wall for heights. Look how smooth this ascent is. 
Just look how smooth this is. Whoa. 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 Hold on. <laughs> what do they do here? Why did they slash? Do they e- They e-pogo. Oh my god. They do that just to get a pogo right there. To get the heights. That's wild. <laughs> that is crazy. Ridiculously fast. I want to see QGA. Do they wall cling storage QGA? Do they wall cling? Oh my god. <laughs> wow. I'm watching- I'm watching this slow down. We don't need C dashes! Who needs them? Who needs the C dashes, chat? We don't need them here. <laughs> wow. So, by the way, for those wondering why they get C dash anyways, uh, it's ha it has to do more with the rule set than it has to do with the, um, the necessary. I can't speak. With it being necessary. So it has to do more with the rule set than about C dash being necessary in the run. So the walking storage rule set states that for walking storage to be allowed for skips, you need to have both the player state, the player uh, items and abilities, and the room state to allow for that same movement to happen glitchless. So walking storage is only allowed to do skips, for example, to walking storage uh, across QGA here, it's only allowed when we have the ability to do that normally, and to do it in the same path and in the same way. So, yeah, that's that's the walking storage rule set, and that explains uh, why this keeps the same route as no major glitches, for example. Yeah, it makes sense for human runs, because otherwise you could use walkling storage to, like, skip the shade skip. You could use it for really weird and glitchy things. You could skip beast den with walkling storage. Um, so it, it's, it, it makes sense for human runs, but it also, I think, makes sense a little bit for tasks to follow an MG anyways, because it allows us to see how far the same route can be pushed, and I think that's really cool. I think that's really awesome, personally. But moving on. Queen's Gardens. What happens in Queen's Gardens? They actually C-dash. Yeah. So some sections are actually worth the C-dash, because C-dash is faster than even the fast wall cling storage. So they're getting soul, doing some RNG manipulation in the menuing, C-dashing across in here. And yeah, I'm assuming they're getting double hits. They go down there, they go down there just briefly, just briefly to get the Geo. Because you're noticing they're going to need 250 Geo by the end of um, Beast Den, right? So they're going down briefly just to pick up some Geo right here. They pick up exactly 10 Geo. Uh, and then they go back up immediately, line up a double double hit. That's really cool. That is really awesome. They do... Wait, they do the Underplat damage tank here. The hazard warp. They do it from below the platform. That's slightly faster. And here I'm gonna be assuming, yeah, just inventory dropping. Still the fastest way to descend. And here they still opt to C dash because you know it's just faster doing longer stretches of. Whoa. <laughs> wow. I'm watching this room again. Screw this. I'm watching this room again. Look at this. As soon as they're not a straight, there's not a straight line to go through, it's walkling storage time, everyone. HK slides in the chat. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's so cool. And they have soul here. They're getting just the right bit of soul. I'm curious whether they go for the 9 soul enter or the 8 soul enter. It seems like they have 9 now. Okay. And of course they're walkling storaging, because why the heck not? This descent is actually pretty normal. Right here, 
They get wall cling storage in the previous room. Right there on the wall, I believe. Right here on the wall, they get wall cling storage, I'm pretty sure. And then that wall cling storage is stored right here. They do a physics frame perfect jump right here. Store the wall cling storage. Just to do that little wiggle up to here. There is so much detail, so much attention to detail, that I can't even go into. Which is, I'm gonna recommend you all to check out uh, CC's own analysis of the task. Because it's probably even more uh, high detail. I'll have it linked. When this is turned into a video, I'll have it linked in the description. And I'll also make sure to put one of those little card things or whatever. Um, so I highly recommend you check out CC's own, like, um, analysis, so to say, of the tasks, or their breakdown. Uh, because he, I think, goes a lot more in-depth to what the tasks does and why. I can only tell you so much. Anyways, moving on. So I'm assuming this movement is going to be pretty similar, except some small walkling storage and stuff. A lot of really precise wall clings, just nice jumps, very smooth. They do some trans dashes here, very blessed. Trans prides in the chat. And of course they sit down on the bench. So technically, this is what I mentioned with wall cling storage. Technically you could skip Beastun through the, uh, the shortcut up here. Um, technically you could skip it. But because of the no major glitches rule set, that is not allowed. Because you don't have wings. So we still do beast end, like, regularly. And they go into beast end, right? Same as usual. You know, just having a vibe. Chilling out in this little web. 25 minutes flat. Is when they enter, by the way. 25 minutes flat is when they enter Be Stun. And the Welcome Storage, of course. I want to see how they handle the, the, the Devouts. Interesting. So, they still opt to kill the Devouts instead of RNG manipulating the Devout skip. I'm assuming probably because they need Geo. Because right now, uh, we're very short on Geo. And the Devouts are a pretty fast way of getting Geo. Uh, so you can technically lure this Devout backwards. Let me get a better... Like this. Let me give you a better perspective. So technically, you can get this Devout to walk backwards and then Pogo over it. But I don't think it saves enough time and also we need Geo. So they opt to kill the Devouts, which is really fast because they stay really close. They get all the nail hits really precisely. And the perfect wall jumps as well. Wall cling storage into a C dash here. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know why I hung myself up on that, but wow. These wall jumps are very satisfying. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah. The wall jumps by themselves make this really cool. Do they save the grub though? CC. CC, you didn't. CC, why? Why didn't you just take the time loss? Why didn't you just take the time loss? Can't you nail turn around off the grub or something? Oh, I'm in denial. I'm in denial. Poor grubby. Wouldn't have been a 28. That's actually kind of true. <laughs> if they saved the grub here, it wouldn't have been a 28. Kind of sad. But I guess the sacrifice was necessary, depending on what you prioritize. Oh well. Today is a sad day for grubbies. I'm mourning, chat. Today we all mourn the grubby. This is a truly tragic day. Moving on. Farewell, Grubby. You will be missed. And of course, they do a pogo. Okay, that's really cool, actually. <laughs> on the devout strat, regularly you just... 
either up slash or side slash. But the task does a pogo, because the geo, when it explodes out of the um, the the uh, devouts, it flies upwards, right? And they want to be right on top of that. So you're gonna see. Actually, let me slow it down. It's pretty interesting to to take a look at. So you're gonna see as they do the devout quick kill, nail nail, and then they damage tank with an up slash, and then nail fireball, and then they pogo right there and dash from the top, and just like that they pick up exactly the amount of geo that they need because here you know we're missing what 32 32 geo no 33 geo is missing right get 35 and just like that the geo is not a problem anymore we have enough geo and it's just time for Hera now 252 geo a nice palindrome C dashing over to Hera Interesting that they don't do any RNG manipulation on this one. That's pretty noteworthy. On um, Monomon, they did a lot of dashing around and moving around while they hit. But there we go, that's the third Dreamer. And now what they need is... Uh, don't need RNG for the exit. Alright, there's, there's the explanation. The exit doesn't really need any RNG. Oh, okay. So, for Monomon, you needed the jelly, but here you don't need it. And of course, Welkling storage galore. A lot of Welkling storage going on here. Some inventory drops. There's not much to say here. It just speaks for itself. Aside from, you know, the crazy amount of frame-perfect inputs that are happening at every moment. I want to see the second insta-bell. Look at this bell. Yeah, it's there. Right away. What does this look like in slow slow motion? Okay, so they look down. They're like, whoop. Yeah, Bell's right here in like a frame. <laughs> yeah, that is that is a tier of Insta Bell that humans probably qu can't quite do. Pretty impressive, honestly, by itself. And the instant stag menu, of course. Now it's just the Hollow Knight. I'm curious about what Hollow Knight will be like, chat. Hollow Knight is a very RNG ridden boss fight. So I'm I'm quite curious as to what the perfect Hollow Knight fight looks like actually. Alright. Okay, so here CC actually mentioned this uh, this to me earlier. Uh, this is the only mistake in the task that he's aware of. He mentioned it briefly to me yesterday. Accidentally, he holds the C-dash slightly too long. <laughs> it's like a second. But to have that be the only mistake that is made across the multiple dozens of hours that it took to make this is pretty impressive. Why couldn't he change it? He probably noticed after he was done uh, tasking the entire THK fight. And the thing is, since all the RNG is like dependent on what came before, every action, every input that came before, you would have to redo the entire THK. All right, so the Hollow Knight shot, going into the uh, the arena, a solid 27 minutes and 16 seconds. I am really excited to see how this one goes. All right, the Hollow Knight. The chains were cool as well, yeah. Wow. Wait. They just triple hit. Humans double hit on the dashes. They just they just triple hit. Hold on. Take a look at this again. One, two, three. Triple hit. Triple hit. Is that wait, was that four? 
I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> okay, so the, um... First of all, also scream skip on the first scream, which is pretty cool. So... The first thing to note here is that the perfect RNG is about what I expected. It's just enough time to he to get soul and then a dash. Enough time to get soul and then a dash. Like, look at this again. The fight starts and it's just like, yeah. Triple hit. Triple hit. Triple hit. Triple hit. Scream skip. <laughs> it's so cool. And then it's just more of this pattern. This is the fastest RNG you could possibly get. A double hit on the, the jump back there. Interesting. This attack to probably get soul, I would assume. And then followed by the scream skip. And that is already the, the halfway points. Where the music changes. And then they get this pattern. They just hover there. That is just wild by itself. And there, there's a scream skip. And there it is. Done. That was what, like, when did the fight start? That's a 35 for like the final hit. When did they wake up? It's like a minute. It's a minute shot. The fight took a minute. That is wild. That is- this is absolutely insane. And they start healing. And just like that, the any percent task draws to a close. Ending up at 28 minutes, 59 seconds, and 370 milliseconds. That is... That was really cool to watch. That was... That was certainly a watch. That's insane, chat. That's wild. Once again, chat. Once again, please. Please check out Constructive Cynicism. Uh, he spent a lot of time on making this task, and all the credits go to him for all the hard work, and it turns out into a fantastic show of just amazing strat upon amazing strat, and it's just so cool that we have full game tasks in Hollow Knight now. There's also the no main menu storage task by Krythum from a, like a week or so ago. Like, the tasks are popping up, the tasks are getting here. They're here now, they're here to stay, and I am all here for it, because goddamn, it is amazing to see this. To see just the limit of what humans can do on display, it's just wild. Or not, sorry, what humans can do, but what the game has as its limit. Absolutely ridiculous. You know the famous saying about monkeys and typewriters, chat? This is the Hollow Knight Monkey Typewriter. After infinite time. <laughs> Where am I going with this? I don't know. <laughs> so that was the Hollow Knight Tool Assistant speedrun. Uh... <laughs> that was truly, really awesome to watch. Once again, major shoutouts to CC. Um... Definitely check out his channel. He's not only a really good tasser, but also a generally really good speedrunner. He speedruns both Hollow Knight and uh, Rain World as well. So if you like those two games, definitely check CC out. Uh, and yeah, that is going to wrap up the Hollow Knight tasks. This is the first full game, no major glitches tasks. And uh, it was a joy to watch. I'm super excited to see what the task community um, brings out of this what comes in the future, what improvements can be made, what other categories people are going to task. But also, what I'm also super excited to see is how the human runners, how RTA runners can learn from the tasks 
Like, what can we find? Because CC found, like, five different ways to get Walkling storage in, like, the weeks that he worked on this. There is so much stuff that we can learn from, from Tass. Not only s ways to um, get Walkling storage or whatever, or ways to use glitches, but, like, genuine strategies can be found that are humanly viable, that are humanly faster. It's just... There, there are so many things that can that can be um, found and can be used from this. And as tasking goes on and we get more tasks for more categories, we're going to get more discoveries. So it's kind of like a complementary thing, you know. The human runners uh, find things that helps the tasks be more optimal. And the tassers find things that makes the human runners be more optimal. So it's really like a complementary process, and I find that really cool. That's one of the things that I'm genuinely really happy about and really excited to uh, to see is how they um like how we can learn from the tasks and what comes next, you know. So yeah, so there we go. There are my final thoughts on the any percent tasks. It was an absolute joy to watch. And once again, I want to give a massive shout out to Constructive Cynicism. Definitely check out his content. Probably going to be uploading some more actual videos soon. Uh, I've been a little bit sick, so I haven't really had much energy to work on stuff. But I'm live every day on Twitch doing speedruns, so if you want to stop by, that would mean a ton to me. Link is in the description along with CC's links. Thanks for watching and have a good one. <laughs>